This is Magneto Hydrodynamic Rocket Engine Test Firing number 132. Hey, JP here. Today I have the video and info of the latest firing and an update of our Magneto Hydrodynamic MHD research. Our last test before this one was a complete mess. Everything on the engine worked, but one data logger was sketchy and we lost some data. Even worse, on the other data logger, we lost the data altogether. On top of that, the firing sequence was chaotic. There are 120 steps on the checklist to start this puppy, and we just had no flow. This was our most complex one to date, and we just did not have the sequence right. There is no way we can move on to the next stage with the more complex engine tests until we have this figured out. Whenever we're having trouble, my mantra is get methodical. We make the list and start crossing out the problems. The results were tried on this firing. This was one of those back to work tests, stepping away from the cutting edge for a moment and working the problems. For starters, we built an entire new data logger for the load cells and took a completely different approach to the code running on it. We are now running at 520 samples per second on the load cell and, as before, we're running 1,000 samples per second on the electrodes. You know, we also paid more attention to the cable runs. Data cables really don't like being close to the 40,000 volt cables, let alone the over 100,000 volt cables that we'll be using on the next test run. You know, this is all part of our plasma rocket engine development program. The MHD firing series tests are just one aspect of the plasma engine, the magnetic interaction with the plasma portion. This technology will drive our airships. It's small now, but as we continue to work out the systems, we'll begin scaling up. In this test, we measure the plasma interaction by measuring the voltage across the electrodes. These are embedded in the middle of the magnetic field of the engine. We also use a load cell, you know, an electronic scale like you have in the bathroom, to measure the thrust and the data loggers to record it all on SD cards. The MHD part of the engine can run in two modes. In the first mode, it actually generates electrical power. Think of the generator in your car. It uses electrons running through a magnetic field to create electricity. In your car's generator, the electrons are in the wires that are wrapped around the shaft of the generator. In an MHD engine, it's pretty much the same thing. However, instead of electrons in the wire, it's ions in the rocket engine exhaust that carry the charge. But it's still the same process of charged stuff flying by magnets that creates electrical power. Like a generator, you run it one way to get electrical power in and the opposite way to get it out. In the case of an MHD engine, pulling out electrical power slows down the rocket exhaust. In rocket terms, it reduces the specific impulse, or ISP. ISP is a performance number of the rocket engine. Think of it sort of like miles per gallon. Putting electrical power in speeds up the exhaust, increasing the ISP, hence the two modes. Applying this to the airship, we pull electrical power out during the lower portion of the flight of the airship when we need electrical power for the drag reduction systems in the lower atmosphere. And by lower, I mean 200,000 to 300,000 feet. And we put power in from the solar arrays when we need the high thrust for the orbital insertion. The trick is converting electrical power to and from thrust. That's what these tests are all about. 
you know, to give you a feel for ISP, a water bottle rocket has an ISP of about 60. The space shuttle main engines have an ISP of 450. An electric ion engine has an ISP of over 40,000. We're shooting for our end game plasma engine to have a very modest IP throttle range from 250 to 1800. You know, it took about three months to get all the problems from the last run worked out. However, you don't really know until you do the run and look at the data. So it was time to power it up and push the button. But first, a great big heartfelt thank you to our Patreon supporters. You are paving the way. If you're interested in joining, there's a link in the description below. Now, I've talked about the firing. Now, let's take a look. The firing went great. You know, these engine runs require a checklist. There are three pages of things to do to conduct this test. This firing was a big improvement procedure-wise, but it still resulted in arrows, circles, crossed out lines, and hastily rewritten notes. It looks like 30 kindergartners had a go with a checklist with a box crayons. This time, both data loggers ran to finish, and we actually got the data. We ran 1,000 samples per second across the electrodes on one data logger and 520 samples per second for thrust on the other. On this test, we pulled electrical power out of the unit, resulting in the decreased thrust as we intended. We need to run this test exactly the same way several more times to get a good set of baseline data. This is to be sure that the load cells and the data loggers are working correctly but also we need to get a good set of before data so that the after data has meaning. Then we can move on to advancing the engine. One of the things that we also need to do before moving forward is to start automating parts of the test. The firing procedure is just getting too complicated. It's taking too long to get through the checklist and in spite of a lot of training we do, it is too easy for mistakes to creep in. We're looking to drop an Arduino single board computer into the mix to start automating some of the firing sequence. We're going to do this just a little bit at a time. You know, we won't ever get to the big red go button, but we're heading that way. You know, after we do all those calibrations, then it's time to step up the power. The last power in test, we used a coil from a 1968 Volkswagen Bug to drive the voltage from 30 volts to 40,000 volts. The next power in firing, we'll use a race car coil we have that's overdriven to 105,000 volts at 30 amps, and we'll run that through the core. 
This is a test run of the high voltage system for that upcoming test. While we are doing these firings, we are also doing test firings of other parts of the engine. We are running three concurrent engine programs, the RF induction and the linear acceleration and the potassium paraffin fuel cores. As these come online, we'll be integrating them into the MHD system, working toward the complete Symphony engine system. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out. The high current firing should be intense. Okay, it's time to get back to building. Thank you for watching. JP Aerospace, America's other space program.